Welcome to your video on introduction to the second trimester. We'll be going over some basic lab values as well as fetal lie and presentation. Now I know for a lot of you this is a much dreaded topic, the fetal lie and presentation. There's a lot of awkward methods out there such as be the baby, but we are really excited to give you a much easier simpler way, something that's going to help you on your registry exam and as well as in a practical setting. We need to know how to identify not just fetal lie in presentation, but also to know how to confirm normal fetal situs. And so what is fetal situs? Fetal situs is when we're looking at the abdominal and the chest organs and matching them to the fetal lie. If everything matches, then we call it situs solitus. And so if they don't match, that indicates that the baby has some form of situs inversus, with the abdominal organs and or the heart being on the wrong side of the fetus. So this is where these transverse abdominal pictures come in when determining fetal lie. The purpose of these images is to know if you know what the fetal abdomen should look like based on a specific fetal lie. And so that's why we need to be able to look at the picture of an abdomen and say this baby should be breech or this baby should be cephalic or transverse head right, transverse head left. So before we get into determining the fetal lie based on these images, let's go over a really important principle that we see here in our notes. It says in an axial view of the fetal abdomen, the fetal lie is perpendicular to the transducer position. If it looks like a circle, that means we're axial to the fetus. And that means we are perpendicular. So whatever the transducer is, the baby is perpendicular to that position. So why don't we go ahead and illustrate that? Okay, so here we have our mom. Let's say our transducer is in the transverse position. Okay, so here's our probe, it's in transverse. And on our screen, we see a picture that looks like this. The axial view of the abdomen, right? Here we have our stomach, it's nice and round. Now we just said that in this view of the abdomen, our probe is perpendicular to the axis of the fetus. That means that the baby's lie is opposite the transducer orientation. So if our transducer is in transverse, baby looks like a circle, that means the baby is lying longitudinal. Now once we establish that, we only have two options. We only have either cephalic or breech. Okay, what if our probe is sagittal or longitudinal? So if our probe is like this, longitudinal or sagittal, again, Baby looks like a circle, axial view of the abdomen. The baby is perpendicular to our probe. So now our baby must be lying transverse. And so now we only have two options. It's either head maternal right or head maternal left. So key point, if they're showing you a view of the axial abdomen, the fetal lie is opposite the transducer orientation. And so in order to answer these questions, they must tell you the transducer orientation because this view of the fetal abdomen you can get in any fetal position. So pay close attention to that in the question what the transducer position is, and then you're going to switch it for the fetal lie. Okay, let's take a look at our next step. So once we have our first step down, and that's establishing the fetal lie based on the scan plane, and we're going to write that down, right? The next step we're going to do is identify the spine and the stomach. And we're going to visualize or draw an arrow from the spine to the stomach in the closest section. And we're going to see if it goes clockwise or counterclockwise. So let's take a look at our diagram here. If it goes clockwise and it's a longitudinal baby, it's cephalic. If the baby is in transverse and it goes clockwise, the head is on maternal right. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that the abdominal view in a cephalic and a transverse head right baby are exactly the same. That highlights the importance of first establishing 
how the baby is lying in comparison to the mom. So again, if the transducer is in the transverse scan plane and our baby looks like this, we know we're a longitudinal lie. And if it goes like a clock, then it's cephalic. What if it's not clockwise? What if it's counterclockwise? Well, then it's either breech or head maternal left. Okay, so let's go back to our illustration and work these all out. Okay, so let's say we have a transverse scan plane. So transverse scan plane, baby is longitudinal. So now we only have two choices, cephalic or breech. So our second step, identify the spine, go from the spine to the stomach. We notice in this diagram again, it's clockwise. So our answer would be cephalic. Okay, let's try another one. Now let's say we're a sagittal scan plane. That means baby is now transverse. Again, we're gonna identify the spine, spine to stomach. Now this one is going counterclockwise. So that means transverse lie, head left. So why don't we practice with a real ultrasound image? Okay, here's your image. I'm gonna give you the scan plane. First, think about what the fetal lie would be. Okay, so this scan plane is transverse. So how's baby laying in the mom? Must be longitudinal. All right, so this baby is long. Now we're gonna find our spine. Here it is. Find our stomach. We're gonna see how it rotates. So spine to stomach, this one goes clockwise. So in a longitudinal baby, that's clockwise. What's our fetal lie? Cephalic, or we could also say vertex. Remember, cephalic and vertex are the same, head is down. All right, let's do another one. Same scan plane, transducer is in transverse. Where's the spine and where's the stomach? So here's our spine, there's the stomach. Let's draw our arrow. All right, counterclockwise. So in a longitudinal baby, and it's counter, what's the fetal lie? That's right, it's breech. Nice job. Now in all of these images so far, we have been using the stomach as our guide. Technically, we can use any organ that is only found on one particular side of the fetus. Uh, we could also use, for example, a four-chamber heart view because the apex of the heart is supposed to be also on the left side of the fetus. So technically, instead of an abdominal view with the stomach in it, we could see a chest view with the apex of the heart. So let's say this was our image here. And now they wanted to ask the same question. Well, we're going to solve it exactly the same way. Let's say they told us it was a transverse scan plane, the long baby. Now we go spine to apex now, so same idea. So this one is going counterclockwise. So what's counterclockwise in a long baby? Breach. That's right, so this is a breech baby. Now in some cases, they may actually give you an image of the fetal eye, such as a profile view like this one here. Now in this case, this is actually much easier. And why is that? Well, because we actually see the fetal head. And so all we need to do is figure out the transducer scan plane and identify where the head is. So the difference we have here is that now the scan plane is parallel the fetal lie and not perpendicular. In the axial view of the abdomen, our probe was perpendicular or opposite the fetal lie. In this case, we are now parallel. So for example, if this is a sagittal scan plane, well then this baby is also sagittal, or we actually say longitudinal. Now in a sagittal scan plane, superior is here, inferior is here. So the cervix would be to the right of our screen, making this baby a cephalic or vertex lie. Well, what if this was a transverse baby? Well, to get this view, our probe would also have to be in transverse. And if our probe is in transverse, then this side of the screen is the maternal right, and this side of the screen is the maternal left. So in a transverse lie in this view, 
this would be transverse head left. So as I mentioned, this is not as common as the axial views of the abdomen, but just take your time with these fetal eye questions. So even if they were to give you an image that you're not expecting, or it could even be a diagram, just use your principles that we're discussing here today, and you can't go wrong. Now again, why are they showing you these pictures instead of an actual view of the fetal eye? Because they need you to prove that you understand fetal situs. So as long as these match, right, as long as the abdomen and the chest match the fetal eye that it should be, then we call it situs solitus. If something doesn't fit, let's say the stomach is opposite, then that's going to be abdominal situs inversus. Let's say the abdomen and the heart are different than the supposed lie, then that would be total situs inversus. Or let's say the stomach is in the right position, but the apex of the heart is flipped, then that would be dextrocardia. So this method might take a little getting used to, but it is tried and true. And once you do a few practices, I have no doubt that this will be your go-to method and it actually makes things a lot easier in the end. So why don't we finish up with our practice questions for today and that will complete our lesson. So I really want you to pause the video when the image appears and problem solve. Go through all of the steps that we did today, focusing in on the proposition, finding the spine, finding the stomach, identifying the rotation, and deciding which fetal lie this baby should be in. And then we'll go over it together. Okay, so how'd you do on this one? So let's start with our first step, probe position. Remember that probe position is going to tell us how the baby is in the mom, if it's a longitudinal lie or if it's a transverse lie. So we notice that the probe position is sagittal. So sagittal probe position, baby is axial, that means the baby is laying in transverse. So we know we have a transverse lie. So now our next step is to identify which side of the mom the head should be on. Is it maternal head left or maternal head right? So for that step, we're going to identify our spine, we're going to identify the stomach, and we're going to see how it rotates. Now in this image, we have an image of the abdomen with the stomach, and we also have an image of the chest with the apex of the heart. Since we're given both, we really don't have to worry about the other one. We can just focus in on the one with the abdomen and the stomach, and as long as the apex is on the same side, we know that they match each other or they are okay together. So we have our spine to stomach. Do you notice how this goes counterclockwise? So we have a transverse baby, counterclockwise, that is head maternal left. So our fetal lie in this one should be transverse head maternal left. Let's do one more together. All right, so how'd you do? Now we have a transverse scan plane. So transverse scan plane means the probe is in transverse, which means baby is now longitudinal. So we know we have a long baby. So long baby means we only have two choices, either breech or cephalic. So now let's go to our abdomen picture. Let's find our spine. Here we now have a clockwise orientation from spine to stomach. So clockwise in a long baby means we have a cephalic lie, or we could also say vertex lie. So that would be our fetal lie. Now again, we could use other anatomical locations like we've just said to make sure everything checks out and matches. We have, for example, our portal sidens. We want this going away from our stomach. We also see we have our aorta and IVC. They're in their correct locations. So when we're doing this, we're making sure that everything is in the right spot, on the right side of the baby. And so as long as those things check out, we have normal situs solitus. So that's all we have for you today. Congratulations on finishing this video. If you still feel that you're struggling with this section a little bit, please feel free to just review the video. It's okay if you're struggling on this. You'll get there with a little repetition. And of course, when you are ready, there will be your online quiz that will have more